Hello Underachievers! So just before I get into the video, I just want to remind you guys that I am going on tour in January. They are in these places on these dates and it's going to be a super super fun time. If you enjoy screaming and yelling and running around and seeing me look silly on stage. I'm just having a good time, really. Then come buy tickets, the links are in the description and they're like £12. Very cheap, very good. So I've actually made two videos like this before and I have privated both of them. <laughs> so you will not be able to look for them, you won't be able to find them. Um, I watched them back recently and realised that I was kind of being very mean to myself. Which I feel like is not a good example to set because I have a lot of like, you know, young trans guys following me and I would not want to see them talking about themselves in the present as I did back then about myself in the past. Did that make sense? I hope it did make sense. Literally one of the videos was titled, I was an ugly girl, which I believed at the time, but it's just not, it's just not, just not the best example. Now that I'm an adult, I'm 22, I look back at young Noah and don't think, ugh, gross, ugly. I think, ah, oh, God, I was depressed. And I don't know, I just, just felt weird having those videos still up. So I decided to do this video again with more pictures. I'll probably be using some of the old pictures that were in the other videos as well. But you know, I wanted to not be mean to myself. So let's see how that goes. So just for reference, if you haven't picked up from the title and the thumbnail, I am trans. I was born a girl. And now I am not. I came out to everybody in my life in August 2017, which was a few days before my 18th birthday. I started testosterone in May 2018, and then I got top surgery January 2019. And when I think back to my childhood, here is a picture of myself that I think, you know, that, that looks like me back then. Obviously, every trans person comes out at a different time. We don't all follow the same path. I just thought it would be very useful to have a lot of context in this video. So this video is going to be a lot of like, oh, here's a picture of me as a girl. And here's what I think about it. But also, I'm going to like kind of bring you through the years and tell you how I was feeling and what I was looking like and, you know, all that, um, because obviously it might be a bit confusing uh, to a lot of people who don't know my entire life story. So I thought I'd give you a few bits and pieces of it. I would say there were probably like a total of six years where I like presented and looked like a girl, if you get what I mean. I'm not saying that like I was only a girl up until I was six years old and then I didn't come out and I was a boy. That's not how it works. My brain, my brain always felt the same way about myself. But in terms of to the outside world, you probably would have only thought I was a girl for maybe six years of my life. They weren't six years one after the other, they were kind of like sporadic around my life. So my earliest memories are, you know, of wanting to be a boy. I would sit on the toilet backwards, I'd like straddle it, because I thought that's how boys peed, because I saw boys pee and they faced the toilet, so I was like, ah, I'm a boy, I'll do that. Uh, I used to do that, I would make Play-Doh and put them in my pants. And, you know, be like, oh, that feels so much nicer. That feels so much better. I am not missing a dick now. I would also tell girls on the playground that my name was Alex. And a few times they played Kiss Chase with me. And I think they fancied me. Uh, but at that point, I was a little girl. <laughs> also, for reference, take a look at this picture and try and guess which one is me. It's, it's not the fairy princess, but the fairy princess costume was mine. It was a gift. So whenever I was old enough to verbalize that, you know, I wanted to look like a boy or look more masculine or whatever it was, uh, as soon as I was old enough to do that, I did that. Uh, my mom told me that I always was just like, I want a boy haircut. I want a short haircut. I want to look like this boy. Um, so, you know, for as long as I remember, that was always something that I vibed with. And bear in mind, I wasn't given the typical boy haircut back then because I was like literally five years old. Um, I was given a bob, I think. But to me, that was a boy haircut because it was shorter than long hair. So this picture is kind of the hair that I'm talking about. That's the kind of hair that I had. And I was, you know, not entirely happy with it, but it was better than what I had. So let's do it chronologically from the ages of, you know, zero to five. I was a little girl. I was a little baby. I was a toddler and I looked like a little girl. Uh, this is what I looked like. I was always like a tomboy. Um, but you'd look at this picture and be like, oh, a cute little tomboy girl. And then I asked for a short haircut and I got that little bob. And then from the ages of five to 11, I progressively got shorter and shorter haircuts, which, uh, you know, they all kind of fit under the boy haircut category. You know, I know, I know there's not like boy haircuts and girl haircuts, but you know what I'm saying, you know, you, we're, we're not stupid, we know what's going on here. So here's kind of what I'm talking about. I look like a little Oliver Twist uh, orphan child here. Uh, and then my mum actually cut off my entire fringe in these next two photos. That was very interesting. I wanted to look like the boy off of a leapfrog box. And instead, I just became fringeless, but I still think it looks cute. I actually had an on and off boyfriend around this time from like ages 10 to 12. Uh, who actually got his friend to dump me. His friend said, and I quote, he really likes you, but you look like a boy. So, you know, that was my first relationship experience. <laughs> 
wasn't really a relationship. I was way too scared to talk to him in person. I think we hugged once, uh, kissed maybe twice. And then for whatever reason, at the age of 11, I felt bad that my parents were paying for my education. So I spoke to them and I was like, look, I just want to go to the local state school. Let's give that a try. So we ended up going to the local state school, which was a lot bigger and very different to what I was used to. I got bullied for looking like a boy. I, you know, don't remember the extent of it, but I, I know it wasn't nice at all. So for half a year at the age of 11, I decided to start growing my hair out because I did not want to be bullied. But yeah, this is kind of what I look like. Um, absolutely miserable. This was not a fun time. Not just in terms of school, just in terms of family things. Life. Life sucked. <laughs> but yeah, this picture of me looking very sad up against the grass is the longest my hair got at that point in my life. And it was way too long for me. I hated it. So after six months at that school, I had a bit of a breakdown. Um, <laughs> which I didn't really know what a breakdown was. But my mum saw and was immediately just like, hey, like, you hate this school, right? And I was like, yeah, it sucks. And then uh, I moved back to the other school. <laughs> so I lasted in that school for six months, got badly bullied, grew my hair out, and then went back to the old school. Because, you know, it was much nicer. And then, of course, when I got back to the old school, I cut my hair off immediately. And it was great. Those were, like, some very fun years for school. Not for life, but for school, they were very fun. I had good friends there and they didn't give a shit about me looking like a boy or having short hair. They didn't care at all. I then moved to boarding school at the age of 13 during the worst time of my life. It sucked. <laughs> but I literally moved to the boarding school and I looked like this, a 13 year old little girl. I remember going to the school uniform shop and you know, you go up to the school uniform lady and my mum was like, we're here to get some uniform, new student. And then the uniform lady directed us towards the boys uniform because she thought I was a little boy. And so did another classmate in the shop. And it was very awkward. She was like, oh, oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry, here's a girl's uh, uniform. It's very obvious you're a girl, <laughs> silly me. Um, that was a very common occurrence <laughs> in my childhood. Um, but yeah, I looked like that. I started boarding school with short hair and I looked like a little boy. So of course I got teased. I don't remember the extent of it, to be honest. It was not a good time, but I got teased enough uh, to make it so that I wanted to grow my hair out again. I remember specifically one boy being like, what are you doing with your hair? Like, you need to sort it out. And I was like, I, I guess I need to sort my hair out. So then, this is where the awkward growing out hair, becoming a woman, not a woman, hitting puberty phase started. This was, this was the start of it all. This was the beginning of the end. It wasn't, it wasn't the end, by the way. This is where the girl pictures start. So the first one is uh, probably very early on to the hair growing out phase. It was absolutely dreadful. This is the worst my hair has ever looked. I was terrified that I would get teased if I even got like a maintenance haircut, you know, like just to like sort out the layers. I was terrified of even doing that. So I just didn't cut my hair for probably like a whole year. It probably ended up being a whole year where I just didn't cut my hair. So all the layers grew in really badly and I didn't really look like a girl. I just kind of looked like a greasy boy, which, you know, if I didn't want to be teased, that was not the, the way to go. I kind of just had this weird mullety thing uh, and it wasn't great. And you know, I did not realize that people conditioned their hair when I started going to boarding school because I just had a short haircut that, you know, I didn't need to condition it. Didn't realize that was a thing that people did, but I joined a girl's boarding house and I was living with like 50 girls every night. And of course they'd have like, we'd have like showers and we'd see each other's nighttime routines and people would be like, oh, you need to condition your hair. Like, why don't you condition your hair? I didn't, didn't realize that was a thing that people did all the time. Um, so I started conditioning my hair and of course, I went overboard because I really wanted to be light, I guess. That's probably why it was, but I started growing out my hair. I refused to cut it. And then for some reason, for I don't know how long, I would condition my hair three times every night. I would literally have a shower every night and I'd wash it with shampoo and then condition three times because I knew my hair was greasy as hell and the conditioning probably made it greasy to be honest, that's probably why it was so greasy. But because my hair was like such an awkward length and an awkward shape, I would always be like running my hands through it, trying to shape it. So then I just got greasier and then I'd condition and then it would get greasier and it was, it was a terrible mess. It looked dreadful. So here's a picture of me wrapped up in toilet paper. It was 2012. So the, the, uh, the, the, the phone quality was not that good, but you can kind of make out a tiny little ponytail at the back, um, which of course I hated and it was painful because my hair was still quite short. And I went to a boarding school. So the rules were very strict when it came to uniform. We got to wear the queen's uniform, haha, <laughs> uh, cause it was naval uniform. And the rules for the hair was that girls had to have their hair tied back. They couldn't just have their hair tied back with like, uh, uh, you know, twiddly bits. They had to have 
all of their hair pulled back, they weren't allowed any, like, strands at the side to, like, shape their face to make you look, like, fine. It all had to be put back. And at this point, you know, I lived in school and I had friends and housemates. They all, they all had opinions about my appearance, which I guess you would if you joined a school and somebody looked like this. But people said I should straighten my hair. So I started straightening my hair. Actually, I don't know if I straightened it. I might have straightened it. I think my housemates might have straightened it. I think we, we, we both straightened my hair, which I guess I, I feel like made it a lot easier to tie it up. So I, I guess it kind of made it look better. Here's a picture of me with very clearly straightened hair with a ponytail on top of my head. Uh, that was wonderful. This was my school dormitory. Uh, very ugly curtains. At this point, I still hadn't had a haircut. Like, my hair had grown out a bit more than the first mullety, greasy, gross phase. But, it, you know, it was still dreadful. Uh, the layers were not there. It was just, just bad. It was bad. Um, and I wanted a fringe really bad, because I hated not having one. I've always had a fringe, because I've always had short hair. So the idea of not having a fringe and pulling my hair back, which made me feel very feminine, that was off the cards. So what I did was, even though my hair was all one length and not shaped at all, I would just grab it all and just like pull it across my forehead and do like that. And of course it would get greasy because the hair over here should be falling down here. But if you put it over here, it's just gonna go like this. It was dreadful. I tried, I wanted a scene haircut, but I was too scared to cut it again. Even though it was this length, I was so insecure. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't make people think I wanna be a boy. So I, I just won't cut it. Here's a, here's a few pictures from uh, that time. So here's me with my tongue out. Uh, a common occurrence that you may notice as we show you more pictures Pictures? Pictures? Is that I knew I was not the best looking. Maybe I wasn't ugly, but I felt ugly. So in all my pictures, I tried to make ugly faces to counteract how ugly I felt. Because I was like, oh, what if I purposely make an ugly face? Then people can't call me ugly, because they'll see a picture of me looking ugly, and it'll I look ugly because I'm pulling a silly face. Uh, so that's what I did. I had terrible hair. That's that's not me trying to be mean. Old Noah, it was bad, okay? It was bad. I also had braces at this point. So, you know, greasy hair, terrible haircut, not shaped at all, not cut in a year, braces, insecure, not a time. Here's another picture of uh, what I looked like at that time. Again, this is still before I had a haircut. I was not a very happy bunny. My hair is long enough at this point that I could have just got a fringe cut in. I could have just had the layers cut. I probably had split ends. I could have done something to it, but I was too scared to do that. But then at some point, you know, I did decide to cut my hair. I did decide to have a haircut. Emo king as I was, I got a scene haircut because if I couldn't look like a little emo boy, I could at least look like an emo girl. That was how my head was working. I would look at pictures of Pete Wentz from the age of nine in like 2009. 2008, I would look at pictures of Pete Wentz and be like, that is how I want to look. I wanted to be Pete Wentz. I will never be Pete Wentz, but at this point, I was like, you know, if I can't be Pete Wentz, I can be the girl equivalent of Pete Wentz. So I got a scene haircut, and that is the start of seen her Noah. So here is what I look like. Here's a picture of me with my big Fallout Boy poster in the background. I'm pretty sure I got that post especially printed. I don't think that was for sale. I think I just, I think I just went on a website and put the picture in and I was like, yeah, I want that on my wall. But yeah, here's a haircut. I can't say I look at this picture and I'm like, I want to look like that again because for obvious reasons, but not a bad haircut. Um, you know, it looked fine and I was clearly at least a bit more comfortable because I wasn't greasy and had terrible hair, you know? And to be honest, I would have this haircut and because some of the layers at the top were so short, I would pull back the long layers at the bottom and I would just like pretend they weren't there. I would pull them back and make it look like I just had an emo fringe. I can't find any pictures of specifically. I remember doing it and I remember specifically taking a picture like that and it was that picture where my haircut looked short that made me realize, oh sh why did I grow my hair out? It made me feel worse about myself. But yeah, this is the scene hair. It's not, not bad, like, I, like it's not bad. Here's another picture of the scene hair, again, it looks fine. It's just not me, really, is it? I think this was one of the first pictures I took after I got my braces uh, taken off. My teeth are wonky again because they were supposed to take some teeth out before I got braces, but they just didn't do it. And then my teeth went back. I'm gonna get Invisalign at some point. But here's me, you know, see there, you know, wearing my Bring the Horizon Seb Eternal top. I look happier in this picture. I think this haircut gave me some level of confidence. I definitely was still not happy. <laughs> At all. Cannot explain to you what I was going through back then, but it was not great. And then there's this picture. Again, not bad. Scene haircut, pierced the bell t-shirt. I had a lot of bracelets and I look like I'm kind of feeling myself in this picture. My eyes look a bit scary. I wouldn't take a picture like that now, but you know, it's the start of me being like, I can change my appearance and it changes how I feel about myself. I don't have to necessarily uh, do what people want me to do with my appearance 
just because it makes them happy. It was at this point where I was obviously listening to a lot of like emo music and at this point I had emo friends outside of school. Not that people in school were not uh, capable friends, but obviously I was going through something that I did not want to talk about. Uh, at school, because I could not escape from school. I had a few friends online that were into the same music as me, and we would go to concerts together, and, you know, I, I had some form of life outside of school uh, with people who were LGBT themselves. I was kind of like, oh, okay, like, this is, this is, this is a safer place to be in. There's also these pictures of my hair when it wasn't straightened, and I think this looks good. I, <laughs> I would not want to look like this still, but, like, the hair looks cool, I had cool, I had like a cool like wave pattern. I looked like I was like enjoying taking the picture. Always a good sign. Uh, but again, I was very depressed. Um, not just because of the trans thing, but it was at this point where uh, the trans thing kind of became glaringly obvious to myself. I had been spending my entire life picturing myself growing up as a guy. My mom told me at one point, she sat me down with me and my friend and was like, you're gonna start growing boobs soon and you're, you know, you're gonna start growing boobs and that's gonna happen and you're gonna have to start wearing bras. And in that moment, I was like, that's ridiculous. Like, why would I grow boobs? I, I'm, I'm gonna get older and my voice is gonna drop and I'm gonna be a man. But you know, it was during this phase of my life where I realized that um, I was kind of running from my authentic self, if you get what I mean? Because like, as soon as I could, you know, verbalize how I felt about myself, it was always like, I want a boy haircut. I want to look like this. I want to do this. And then looking back, it was only other people's negative comments that made me want to grow my hair out or made me want to wear dresses because I actually, well, I didn't want to wear dresses or want to grow my hair out. I did those things because I knew that it would stop people teasing me and it did. So it's kind of like reinforcing this thing of like, oh, uh, short hair bad because I am girl. So long hair good. You stop teasing me when long hair. So, so what could I be doing wrong? It was at this point where I was like, ah, oh, God, <laughs> maybe not the best idea. But you know, I had to tie my hair back at school so I couldn't just have this kind of nice haircut. I had to tie it back, uh, which kind of looked like this which is not the best at all. But you know, there's pictures of me in my, in my uh, Girls, Girls, Boys, Panic at the Disco limited edition tie-dye t-shirt, which I wish I kept. I was actually terrified to wear that around school because I was so worried that people thought I was a lesbian. And people did think I was a lesbian, uh, which irritated me because I, at that point, I'm bisexual now, so I am attracted to some women. Um, I'm mostly into guys, but at this point I was like, no, I am a gay guy. I am exclusively into men and I am a guy. I'm the opposite of a lesbian, so a bit risky wearing that t-shirt because I feel like, you know, if I saw somebody else wearing that t-shirt at my school, I'd be like, oh, it's a lesbian. Here's me uh, playing drums. I was a uh, head drummer in marching band for two years in a row. I enjoyed that. And then here is me playing guitar, um, which I enjoyed a lot. So like you can tell that although I am still deeply uncomfortable, I'm reaching a point where I'm like, oh, I enjoy playing guitar or I enjoy playing drums. And I had friends outside of school that were like LGBT and into the same kind of music as me. So it wasn't like I was completely alone because I was definitely completely alone when I first started going to that school. So yeah, for me getting a fringe and a scene haircut was kind of a step closer to doing things for myself. It definitely was not full on get my tits chopped off, transition, go on testosterone, and change my name to Noah kind of level. But it was kind of the start. So I was like, okay. I can get a fringe, I can wear emo clothes, I can feel a bit more comfortable, but then of course I went to a naval boarding school that I could not escape. Um, and there were several dinners a year where girls wore dresses and guys wore sh suits. I don't know why that suits. And I'm sure I would have been technically allowed to wear a girl's suit, but then again, like all throughout my life, the idea that, you know, looking like a girl and having long hair and wearing girls clothes, the idea of that being good was always reinforced because whenever I would be myself, I would get bullied for it and then, you know, change so that I wouldn't get bullied. So at this point, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wear the dress. I'm gonna hate it. It's gonna make me hate myself. I remember wearing these dresses, putting them on and looking at myself in the mirror and like wanting to crawl out of my body. Like the amount of breakdowns and panic attacks that I had just looking at myself in a dress was dreadful. I think I was probably very good at hiding that because I think a lot of people in my school didn't realize. But yeah, again, the girls that were in my house, they were all lovely, by the way, looking back. They were nice to me. They would always compliment me when I wore dresses. They'd be like, oh, you have such a tiny waist. You have such a great body. Your butt, you have such a nice butt. 
Uh, these are all compliments, and they're, they're genuinely, like, nice things to say to somebody who is not trans. And obviously I'm not mad at them for saying that, it's just they, they didn't know I was trans, so they wouldn't know how horrible those things were to hear. Uh, it sucks being a trans person and being complimented on the aspects of your body that make you want to die. Because it's like, oh, you like how my uh, waist looks when it's tiny? That is the worst part of myself. I hate it, it wasn't the worst my boobs were, but you get what I'm saying, it was like horrible. So of course, here are me in pictures of those dresses. This white one I got, I don't remember where, I think I ordered it online, but I remember I went shopping with my friends from school and I think everybody was wearing push-up bras or like padded bras, so I got a padded bra because they were like, oh, you should get a padded bra, so I got a padded bra <laughs> and I hated it. Like, this just, it's very odd to look at this picture. I feel like that doesn't look like me. I know it is me, it's still my face, but I like, that is a foreign. It's weird looking at this. Like, even looking at myself in a dress with like my legs shaved, wearing heels, it's so weird. And then here's another one that I got. I got this from Top Man and I bought it because I was like, oh, well, it's not a dress. It's a bodysuit it, or whatever, it's a jumpsuit. I don't remember what it is, but it's got legs instead of a uh, dress, like the one hole. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know the words. Um, but I bought this and I was like, I mean, it fits well. And I, you know, I hated it. This is a weird picture to look at. Obviously, I was not a huge fan of the dresses, but I had gone this far, I had grown my hair out, and I was getting compliments for doing things that made me look like a girl, and I was like, well, this is the path of least resistance. I did not have enough confidence to wear a suit to school, and it would have been impossible for me to come out as trans at my school. I think about that a lot, and how people in, like, other schools are able to come out during school and to have somewhat positive experiences, but I know for a fact that my school would not have been the place for that. Like, that was impossible. So, these long haired pictures are only from the ages of 13 to 15. So I know there's a lot of them, but like, in the grand scheme of my life, like, I'm 22 now, looked like a girl ages 1 to 5, and then half a year when I was 11, and then two years, 13 to 15. Not doing the maths, it's however many years, but you know, that's the total amount of years where I had, like, girl pictures. I, I just qualify girl pictures as pictures where I presented as a girl, you know. And I actually ended up cutting off my hair that summer after those uh, dresses pictures were taken. So here is the first picture I took after getting my hair cut for the third or fourth time, I don't know. Um, I was so happy. I had no pictures taken like this when I had long hair. Like, I look actually happy. I know I look a bit weird, uh, but I was happy. I, I felt happy with my hair then. And it wasn't crazy masculine, but to me it was like, everything was like a step. I couldn't exactly have just been at a boarding school, a naval boarding school, a religious boarding school, where everyone was conservatives. I could not have gone from long hair, wearing dresses, full on to, hello, I'm Noah, I'm a guy, I'm trans now, here's a haircut, here's my shave size. That would have been impossible. This was a massive step to me, and I know it was just cutting off basically like the longer layers of my hair, but it's, it's like a big difference in length. It was like a big deal. Um, and then I dyed it red the next day, which was definitely choice. I was 15, 16 at this point, and I had already kind of isolated myself. Not entirely, but I had stopped giving a shit. I guess. Getting this haircut for me was a big step in me just being like, you know what, I don't want to be depressed and this is as far as I can go right now, but I'm going to do this to make me happy because I don't want to do other things to make other people happy because I did that for too long and it made me sadder. And I remember there was this one guy at a party who I think had a crush on me, but I'm sure would deny it to his deathbed. But he told me I looked much better with long hair. He was like, oh, I think you look so much better with long hair. I think you should grow your hair out again. It looks so much better. I don't think I cared. Like, I genuinely, I don't think I cared about that. I was like, okay, cool. I've, I've grown out my hair twice in my life for other people. Why would I do it again? I was beyond caring at this point. And you know, getting my hair cut, dyeing it red. That was uh, the first step in becoming like more comfortable with myself, I guess. I was still very, very, very dysphoric. I could not look at myself in the mirror. I could not, yeah, I was just not a person at this point. I realized I was not really a person until I was 19 and I'm only 22 now. Um, but you know, I used to, uh, I used to post stuff like this, this picture of me uh, behind my bed with these pillows. There's that picture. And then there was this picture on the train that was my favorite for very long. And then this picture of me with a beanie and they're all giving me very much boy. Uh, and you know what makes it very funny? I was still a girl at school at this point. I was living in a girl's boarding house, wearing dresses for dinners, you know, just doing girl things. But uh, yeah, here's a picture of me with that haircut in a dress. It was, it was horribly painful, but I find it very funny because I was online being Noah. 
I was just like Noah online. I would post pictures of myself from when I was a kid because I wanted people to think I was a cis guy. So I would post pictures of myself as a kid and then I would post pictures of myself like those redhead pictures and people would just assume I was a guy. But I was actually at school being a girl <laughs> uh, with my red hair and my dress and I was wearing Converse in these pictures. Look how much shorter I was than everybody else because they were all wearing heels. And again, I was still pulling the ugliest faces. I knew I would look ridiculous regardless of whether or not I pulled a nice face in this picture because I look weird in dresses. And then finally, here's the last picture of me in a dress. Very uncomfortable to look at. I remember, I think this was the last time I wore a dress for a school dinner. And like my leaving ball, whatever it was, I wore a suit. And it was a guy's suit and I wore a binder, which was ballsy for me. That was like the like the scariest thing I had done at that point. Uh, and it was great and some people were actually really nice about it and some people obviously weren't. But I remember wearing this dress and taking this picture and being like, this is the last time I do this because I am not only incredibly uncomfortable, incredibly depressed, I also look ridiculous because it's so obvious that I just was so uncomfortable. It was just, it was, I was like, okay, none, none of this, no more of this. Um, and, but yeah, that was the end of my girl phase. Uh, after I left school, I came out to everybody in my life. But yeah, I, you know, during my school time, I had friends outside of school who knew I was trans, who called me Noah. It was just a weird, like, Hannah Montana thing where, like, in, in real life in school, I was birth name, and in real life in London, when I was hanging out with my internet friends, I was Noah, and then online I was Noah, and I was living in school, and I had 100,000 followers on YouTube at this point. I had 100k on YouTube as Noah, and I was a girl in school. It, it was a very weird time, but yeah, there you go. Those, those, those are my girl pictures. This video, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. But yes, have a good day, I don't. See you later, losers. Goodbye. Grab tickets to my tour. Come do it. Come do it, it'll be so fun. London's gonna be crazy. We've sold so many tickets for London. So if you wanna come to London, come to London, but London is gonna be so crazy. Did I say have a good day, I don't? Okay, have a good day, I don't. See you later, losers. Goodbye. Pow, 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 pow.